is a legal practitioner. Barrister Peter Said C. Ngweze. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank now, you. gentlemen, without further ado, let's pick up the front page of the blueprint and then we'll look at the accompanying infographics. On the blueprint this morning is the report. Economic benefits of Samoa Agreement. Huge. Terms would standardize Nigeria's agro-produce for exports orders. FG most legal action against Daily Trust over reports. Now, you recall I told you at the start of the show, the Daily Trust newspaper over the weekend splashed its headline story saying that the federal government was looking to promote same-sex marriage in, in lines of this. What the headline read on the Daily Trust of the Thursday edition, the 4th of July, was LGBT, Nigeria signs $150 billion Samoa deal. I'll come to you, Barrister. The Daily Trust now, we're told the FG is mulling legal action against it. The headline story is published, tailored from the angle of LGBTQ and away from the economic benefits which we hear that this agreement entails. Is it culpable of earning the Daily Trust some legal implication? Well, um, you know, the uh, when you're talking about uh, defamation of character, you talk about, uh, number one, the statement will be untrue. And also, of, of course, if it is true, you, you, it's justified. So uh, the, the, it's neither here or there. And of course, when somebody makes a statement, you can only, uh, a conclusive uh, uh, um, um, pronouncement can only be made by a court of competent jurisdiction. So it is only when they go to court and the court uh, says uh, otherwise, that's when you can talk about that defamation has been proved. Of course, you have a legal right to, you know, um, you have that legal right to proceed to court for any person that you feel that uh, says something that is defamatory or that derogates your integrity or personality. So it's neither here or there, provided it has not been tested in the court. Now, now let's understand the Samoa agreements and we'll look at some infographics this morning as released by... President Bola Metinibu's media center. Now, when you look at the infographics, it also talks about the objectives of the Samoa Agreement. One of the bold objectives is the fact that it states the new agreement would serve as a legal framework for EU relations with 79 countries. This includes 48 African, 16 Caribbean, and 15 Pacific countries. Now, 2 billion people are to be covered by the agreements with the agreement set to strengthen the capacity of the EU and ACP, what the ACP stands for, African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries. Now, there are six priority areas. Top of that list is democracy and human rights, sustainable economic growth and development, climate change, human and social development, peace and security, and migration and mobility. Now, we're told that there are 48 African countries, Nigeria not just one of them. Now, a lot of the African countries have a strong stance against same-sex marriages, but away from that debate, many say the distraction is the fact that it's looking at agro-produce to get them to an exportable way and help Nigeria begin to export some of these abundant agri-resources that before the advent of oil, the country was exporting uh, 2 billion people to be covered by this. Many say it's now on the political will to ensure that the clauses of this agreement and the $150 billion dollar is injected towards the benefit of the Nigerian people. Uh, Bito, as a student of history and a student of uh, uh, diplomacy, peace studies and diplomacy, you know, in 1919, uh, 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 we had the first League of Nations uh, that's later marred by the activities of German Emperor Adolf Hitler. Uh, and because of some of the uh, agreements of this kind of nature and disagreement, and it is a period of might and strength, you know, uh, that led us to what we have uh, in 1945, the United Nations. And uh, during that time, from that time to now, there have been a series of uh, uh, agreements and all that, the Beijing Conference, uh, the different conference of year and there and all that and coming uh, to this Samoa agreement that uh, was just signed. One thing that is peculiar about all these treaties is that it is give and take. And the African nations, African countries, the continent Africa has not largely 
or hugely if you look at the antecedent and the cultural heritage of the african people you will find out that the african has not really and sincerely benefited from these treaties i will give you an example you see most of the conflicts that you see in africa has to do with economic economic colored with different interests it could be politics it could be religious it could be ethnic but the main problem in Africa is economy. Now the problem is, the question you need to ask yourself is that, is Africa continent a rich continent or a poor continent? Now if you are, on, if you are able to answer that question correctly with facts available, you find out that the people who have bedeviled Africa are still the superpowers. No African country has a right, you know, to, 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 to vote in the Security Council. You know, it's part of the organ of the United Nations. The Security Council, there are big boys there. The United States, the France, the UK. Uh, China smuggled their way in because of their population. You know, Germany and the rest of them. These are the countries who have a right to determine the, the lives of millions and billions of people across the world. And most of what they protect is their own selfish interests. I will say that as a student of history, a student of diplomacy and peace. Now I can say I can say this authoritatively that this Samoa agreement, I am still studying it. I studied it to some extent. Now there are some languages that were used that some of the lawyers and some of the experts have tried to interfere, inter in, in, interpret like the language like uh, gender. You know, there is a mis mis misunderstanding. You know, between what is called sex and gender. The question is, what is sex in the first place? Sex is the biological difference between a male child and a female child. Then what about gender? Gender is the social construct that is making you the way you want to see yourself, the way you want to be called, the way you want to be addressed. That is gender. You know, I can decide that from today, I can change my gender from, being, from a man to a woman. And that is what is encapsulated in that agreement and some of those things i you know before now there have been this agreement that they want to legalize gay marriage and the rest of them and these superpowers those people who have the power to vote in the security council are the one that usually goes about you know coercing sometimes influencing lobbying countries especially the weak countries in africa to, to, accept, this. to accept this now comes for legal perspective well, is taking time to outline differences between sex and gender, which is gaining prominence in today's world. Mm -hmm. But one of the priority areas of this Samoa agreement, away from the economic benefits and climate change, is human rights. Now, in Nigeria, these issues have been outlawed. Many fear that signing this agreement means that the government going forward might go soft on this human rights matters that border on gender and sex. Uh, the government has reiterated that it would not tilts to the persuasion, much like you said, of these superpowers in the world. Do you have confidence in the President Bola Ahmed administration that it would stick by its all and would not have some amendments in our legislature that might allow for this human rights colorations in the lines of what the Daily Trust had published? Okay, yes. In that respect, you know that treaties, for any treaty to have bindingness or binding force in Nigeria, Section 12 of the net 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 also says that it must be domesticated by the National Assembly. So even if the Nigeria goes ahead to be a, a signatory to that treaty, it doesn't mean that it's operative here. It must be domesticated by the National Assembly. Of course, we, we can cast our mind back to the days of good luck, Jonathan. They were saying that one of his sins was that he there was a, a, the, the law that made the same-sex uh, 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 marriage, uh, distant marriage uh, or or, or intercourse or there about homosexuality, 40 years in prison, penalizing it by 40, uh, 40 years imprisonment. So even if I'm um, also looking at, you, you can't, you know, the world is a global village. We appreciate fundamental rights of individuals to, you know, uh, live a good life and uh, have their free will and all that. But we, there is cultural values because any law that is not in tandem with the culture and the tradition of people are obeyed in, diso in disobedience. So Nigeria can go ahead, you know, be a, a signatory to the treaty is one step, then domesticating it. Then in the course of domesticating, we choose and, you know, leave some is another topic altogether. But you cannot shut yourself out 
to the globalization of the world. You cannot shut yourself out from the, you know, what uh, uh, comes up from relationship. Even we Christians, the Bible says why should we chase a thousand and two we chase ten thousand. Look at the geog geometrical uh, 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 progression of it. So you can't, the, this world is not all about me and me alone. We can as well go ahead and, you know, take the uh, better aspect of it that suits to our culture, cultural heritage. Then the aspect that doesn't, you know, fall in line or is in tandem with what we are doing, we can do away with them. Well, it's one of those pragmatic approaches to the discourse, much like Barrister Peterson Ihuese has said in adopting the treaty with the $150 billion Samoa Agreement. The federal government can choose to accept the good side and in domesticating certain agreements, it is vested in the National Assembly to decide which parts it would want domesticated in Nigeria. So yes, in the coming days, we'd hear if the federal government's intended lawsuit against Daily Trust newspaper would stand in what Barrister Peterson has also said might be some defamation in the way that story was captured. The federal government is deciding this morning to harp more on its agric revolution, which is one of the highlight features of the $150 billion Samoa agreements. Now, in, in keeping on with more stories as we saw earlier in our review, is the resurfacing of long queues at filling stations in Nigeria. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, the Punch, I beg your pardon, and the Daily Trust this morning have stories that image resurfacing queues on their front pages. On the Punch newspaper, you'd find the prominent picture, a picture of resurfacing filling queues in a fuel station, while the lead story reads, fuel scarcity looms as depots raise petrol price to 720 naira per litre. Filling stations raise petrol price as depot price raises, says Ipman. NNPC officials storm Lagos depots, ask marketers to prioritize Abuja. Now, similarly, on the Daily Trust, you'd find another picture above the picture of the vice president. Filling stations long queues resurfacing as the Daily Trust looks to give an expl explanation in its editorial this morning why fill queues persist, spread by marketers. Now, now, over the course of the weekend, I'm sure you encountered some of these challenges. Yeah. Now, many are talking about it from this deregulation of the downstream sector to allow independent players coming. But the challenge is NNPC remains the sole importer of refined petroleum. At a time like this, many were talking about the coming on board of refineries in the country, which would also bring down the cost in landing this fuel and transporting it to many parts of the country. But this is still the challenge we are facing uh, this is July. Promises were that by the end of June, would see refined PMS from Dangote refinery as well. H how do we surmount this challenge in our petroleum downstream sector? Uh, surmounting this challenge, you say, well, I just hope that uh, we'll get it right because I think Nigeria as a country, we have tested different policies. We've, we've delved into different approaches and it all seems to be, you know, abortive and not using that uh, needed resource that we are looking out for. You see, I've always maintained, you know, I try to investigate what could be the cause of free scarcity at these material times. And some of the facts and figures that I could gather is logistics. The problems were attributed to logistics and the recently increased of uh, these uh, interest rates. And some marketers also allays the fair to the, uh, the vessels that brings in fuel into the country. You know, they have smaller vessels and they have bigger vessels. That is one of the challenge. And then in the last how many months, that it is the smaller vessels that have been engaged because the, the bigger vessels are now being engaged by those countries and also Dangote. Dangote is now using some of those vessels and the ones available are the smaller vessels. That is one. And the other factor that could tie, that we can tie this to is the uh, Russia, the ban on Russia that uh, most of the European uh, countries and these superpowers have placed sanction on you on Russia. On trades with Russia. Yeah, on trade with Russia. So most marketers that usually have that smooth relationship with Russia before in getting their PMS have now been well, deterred. They cannot do that anymore because of the sanction and then it affects, us, affects the supply to the country. And another thing is the NMPC. NMPC not supplying uh, enough 
fuel to the marketers because the marketer said their rights their duty is to sell and they are willing to sell because some of their operators operate for 24 hours but the issue is that they don't have these resources and if they don't have it they can't give what they don't have you so you see the problem is that we need to look for in, in why all these are for me i see them as excuses they are just film sale excuses from a nation like nigeria we are talking about a country that is far, far blessed with so much oil and we have refineries every we have at least as of today we have four refineries but what is shocking is that among all these four refineries none is working as i speak to you because we are not still getting fuel from our refineries and the federal government needs to give us a strong statement and sincere fact about what is happening to our refineries i will still keep talking i'll keep talking about what is happening in cardinal refineries what is the state of repair in portacot refineries as well as were we refinery now come to you barrister yes we just see we just saw the conclusion of the national oil and gas week in abuja here and uh, the nnpcl gco mele Kari talked about divestments in the gas sector to complement our oil reserves but it almost feels as though there is a beautiful plan on ground implementation continues to remain a challenge what are your thoughts on this development well uh, talking about fuel scarcity at this age and time is a shame to this country called nigeria because you can record that each successive persons or president that campaign they always campaign that give them two months give them three months refineries will be working before december before june and all that it's a shame what are we talking about we are an oil producing state and we also have refineries for Port Harcourt, Nere, and uh, Kaduna, and uh, uh, um, this thing. So what are we talking about? It's a shame because we have the refineries, we have the oil. So what are we talking about importation? In fact, mm -hmm. Nigeria should have been sufficient enough to export to the other ac African ca countries. But because of lack of political will, corruption, and whatever you can call it, or should I call it not, priori not prioritizing the uh, oil sector? is a function of all this that we are talking about. So I, I, I in fact, I, I felt so bitter. Even as I was coming to this place, I have to buy black market, a liter 1,000 naira, before I could find myself. It's a pity, you know. I was talking about, take, discussing with somebody, once in Nigeria you get to a level, you want to adjust with the economic, economic reality, there will be another austerity measure. There will be another program you know, shattering either from negligence of the government or whatever policy of the government that will shatter your uh, 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 arrangement. By then, Nigerians are getting impoverished on a daily basis. Last week, we saw a report of 13 multinational companies that existed in Nigeria for a period of time. And the antecedent unemployment, are we making progress? Can average producer or manufacturer or manufacturer make proceed, make profit in Nigerian economy? The answer is in the, in the negative. Talking about government policies, taxation, uh, uh, inaccessibility of raw materials, non-power supply, and all that and all that. So, it's a pity. Now, President Bola Metinibu had signed three executive orders in the oil and gas industry. But when I listened to the comments of Aliko Dangote, the other day we reviewed it mm. as well. And also the comments coming in from Mr. Miali Kari. Mm. They keep on talking about some powers and principalities and cabals mm. that are frustrating the efforts of the day are yeah. there non-state actors that are, are seemingly bigger than our national interest you see uh i listened to dangote and we analyzed it in this studio the last time and when he talks about principalities and powers he wasn't talking about the nigerian people he was talking about the people who are benefiting from this fuel from the outside the country people who have been in our business they are responsible for the failure of our refineries they are responsible for the poverty we have on a daily basis they are responsible for the conflict we have here they are responsible for some of these problems we are having we didn't know until when private sector gets into that sector we use an example of the aviation sector and now the uh, the the oil sector you know i told you something about alan oyema the last time the ceo of peace air peace peace i told you how he was almost frustrated out of the business. When Dagode got in, he faced the same challenge. Who are those principalities? There are people who 
naturally believe that this business is their business and and i tell you let me tell you whenever you see something in any part of the world is not created by anything it's created by men there are some people that are not interested in the workings and the progress of certain countries in the world and they are super people they are super people they are not ordinary people they are cartels they are a group of people they control this world i'm not saying i'm not saying devil i'm not saying satanic forces i'm talking about big name big people big conglomerates that are capitalists that controls the world capitals they control the liquidity in the world they control the business so, talk about software talk about agriculture talk about anything they have control now how do you save yourself from those kind of people you need political will you need sincerity of purpose and understanding that we need to localize our own solution it is not everything that is coming from the external world that we need to accept sometimes we need to look at our people any kind of business that you are doing anything you are doing that is not sustainable you desist from it look at business that can encompass everybody and everybody is engaged doing something our resources are not controlled by nigerians most of these resources they still have influence of the shadow party and that is why the government needs to sit up let me tell you even if other government is trying, the got you know, there is a situation you find yourself. Your job is, you know, when you are drawn inside the river, what do you do? You scamper for help. Anyhow, you just do like this. To stay so, afloat. So stay afloat. What the federal government is doing presently is just trying to double like this, bring their hand like this to stay afloat because the country is joining because of what? Some of the overwhelming influence from this power that be. Now let's look at other papers as we continue to review this morning. It's from the economic angle and what is affecting certain key players in the industry uh on the vanguard this morning and the national economy before we pick up this day newspaper let's just quickly breeze through on the vanguard newspaper this morning it says brewing industry choking over high cost of raw materials brewing industry choking over high cost of raw materials it says in the strap lines expenses rise 113 percent to 188 billion naira importation alternative stifled by high exchange rates top brewers borrow 812 billion naira to survive loan repayment costs rises 191 percent losses escalate by 1034 percent now on the national economy it says fixing fx issues major option as multinationals exit nigeria fixing effort fx issues major option as multinationals exit nigeria stakeholders blame exit on low purchasing power competitive market nigeria loses 95 trillion naira in five years now let's also quickly look at the this day newspaper on this day newspaper you'd find above the master the story of interest that story says s and p dangote refinery capable of solving Nigeria's FX problems. Catalyst economic development. Now, the challenge is blamed on FX. We are seeing what is happening in the brewing industry. Most of them are borrowed. And looking at the loan repayments, people are saying even with this borrowing, they might not be able to make profits. Multinationals like Barista said are already exiting the country. At this point in time, does the honors lie solely on Dangote Refinery? It's published on this day as S&P are looking at Dangote, uh, his largest single trade refinery, sugar cement it almost feels like the only thriving manufacturer in the country does the honors of rescuing nigeria's economic fortunes rest solely on dangote well you, you may say that uh you is uh, neither here or there you know because uh even if you say let it, let dangote or let government go and rest on their oars and allow dangote to rescue nigeria is momentarily he is there to maximize profit not as government that is there to break even, if it's a government establishment. Well, government can have an agreement with Dangote for a, a period of time, which you, you have something like tax waiver, you have something, other incentive, and all that, and all that, you know, for the company to blossom because of this harsh economic situation. But that's a temporary measure. It's not a long-term measure. What government needs to do is to deregulate the 
economy 100 percent give license to do whoever that applies or whoever that requires that has the capacity that meet up the requirement then set up a regular legal and regulatory framework to monitor and supervise the operators in the market so these are the measures that government don't make also come and partner with one or two persons empower them by way of incentive way of loan and way of the and you know give them concession because of the crisis that we are seeing ourselves because in fact there is even the company they are talking about how long can they continue to borrow because there is no any inver uh, any statistics or indices that shows that this borrow there is a uh, 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 maybe there is something that will cushion it uh, cushion uh, uh, the uh, exchange rate or, or the harsh economic situation so government needs to plan and sit over it then you talk about cabas you know of course we you know um Person, what does it was defining federalism? He said that federalism is defined by every country that oppresses it. Nigeria, yes, oppresses federalism. U.S. also oppresses federalism. That's what we are talking about. Autochthony, the, the, the homegrown constitution, the homegrown culture of the people. So now, the, the Kabas, we have seen the, the Benin Republic, Mali, and Ivory, uh, some other countries that had military issues. We see that the economy blows on. We also saw what Abacha did when he was in power. For all those years, there was wage freeze. He entered while dollar was 80 and left dollar at the, eight, at the uh, 83. You know, you can sit up and any job, like my brother said, any police that doesn't work out for good, that is not the in, for the interest. Because Section 14 said that the essence of the government is for the welfare and interest of the people. He goes ahead to say that the security is of the paramount interest of the government so why we have government even in the in the in the days of john law is we give our power to the government for government to protect our interests protect our security and also ensure that we are well taken care of so these are what government to uh, to look at the economic team that was just set up this policy is it good does it favor Nigerians? Okay, look at what is happening in the telecommunication industry when uh, GSM was was launched there was um, a, a charge per a specific period of time, but the economy, the, the sector was deregulated. We have a connect, we have other other this thing. They now shut down from charging pay a particular time because that certain time, if you recharge maybe one week or one month, everything that you have will just go whether you make call or not. Just like what is happening with DSTV now. Sorry to mention it. So, all these things should be pay go. If you shut down, yes, when you, you come back, you own your this thing and you carry on. But the government has refused. To make the regulatory and institutional framework to regulate our market economy to be strong and to stand on its, its, its leg. So this is where the problem lies. Guide the economy. We have the population. We have the resources. We have the manpower. There is a way the government can go about it. Before you know what is happening, Nigeria will be a, a doye. It will be a, a, an eyes. It will, it will be a toast of the moment to other nations. Now, and as we wrap up, uh, time is never our friend. You mentioned something quite sensitive in terms of protecting and securing, and I'll get your comments in a minute or two. But let's look at our last two papers this morning. The Daily News Hub and uh, the Nigerian Tribune, all talking about insecurities. On the Daily News Hub, it is from the angle of kidnappings, where two journalists, their families were also kidnapped as well, with the lead story there beneath the masthead, rampaging bandits gunmen kidnapping spree in kaduna delta state now when you look at the coverage on the next paper as well as we wrap up this conversation it is also on kidnapping as well the nigerian tribune has another story on how this insurgency banditry is worsening food prices it's a challenge let's just get your min your thoughts in a minute or two you see um bito you would ask this question that why is it that there is free movement of arms, small arms and light weapons in African countries? Why is it so difficult for you to smuggle ammunition into US, UK and all that? And even when the citizens have their ammunition, it is licensed. Why is it difficult for us to secure our border? Why is it difficult as a country for us to protect our currency? Why is it difficult for us as a country to protect the sovereignty of the country and the sanctity and the dignity of the human lives in Africa, Nigeria inclusive? I'll tell you that for us to come out of this mess that we are in presently as a country, two things need to happen. One, 
the government needs to declare a state of emergency in every sector as it is presently there is no single sector in nigeria that has not been bedeviled by this uh, uh by this programming that is ongoing then number two the government itself needs to staff itself because there is no way you want the people to sit up when you at the upper keda is not sitting right for nigeria to move we all need to understand that we are in this mess together the government and the people the government will be affected the leaders will be affected and the people will be affected but we need a revolution in nigeria not a war but we need to do what they call a turnaround let's stop from where we are right now look backward look where we are and make some fundamental changes to our future Thank you very much, Honorable Olari Waju Desmond. I must say thank you as well to Barrister Peterson Iweze for making our time.